Hello everybody, it's Kara from Wild Book Garden, and today I'm here with part two of my October wrap-up. I will link part one down below, as well as content warnings, links, everything else I mention. And the first book I'm going to talk about today is Fire by Kristen Kishore. This is the second book in the Graceling series, and this is part of the read-along that I'm hosting, along with Mel from a book fiend named Mel, and Bethany from Beautifully Bookish Bethany. Um, I will link them down below, as well as our live show for this book. Um, yeah, so this is the second in the series, but this is a companion series, and this one is actually a prequel. Um, so it happens before, like several decades before the events of Graceling. Um, and I, I just love this series so much. I gave this book 4.5 stars, so it wasn't, like, I couldn't quite give it a 5 stars, but in my heart it kind of feels like a 5 stars, so I feel like maybe after rereading these this series more in the future, maybe this will eventually be a 5 stars as well. Um, but anyway, so this takes place in a different setting than Graceling. We are in a land called the Dells, and our main character is named Fire, and she's what is known as a monster, um, which are people or animals who have, like, really bright and unusual colored, um, like, hair or fur or anything like that, um, and they're really beautiful, and they have these really strange colors, and they're also very, like, desirable, and so in Fire's case, that is very dangerous for her because she is, um, you know, a human and a woman. So uh, sometimes people take that as an invitation that they can do whatever they want to her uh, because she is so desirable and there is kind of this, like, magical attraction to it as well. Um, not that that excuses their actions and um, yeah, this does not, like most of the books in the series, I think, this does not have great reviews, and I understand why it wouldn't be everyone's thing, but I think what this book does in terms of, like, tackling, like, rape culture and victim blaming is just so impressive and so well done, especially considering this book came out, like, probably more than a decade ago. Yeah, 2009, I think, um, is when this came out, and, like, I just think it's really thoughtful, really nuanced. I realized I kind of just stopped giving you the summary in the middle there, so we're following Fire, um, and she ends up being, like, asked to use her abilities because, um, part of being a monster also means that you have, like, mental abilities, so she is able to, um, like, kind of control people's minds a little bit, and she doesn't like doing that. She only, pretty much only does that in self-defense, um, but there are some dangers facing the kingdom, and, like, the, the prince and king are kind of, like, pressuring her to, or, like, you know, wheedling her to, like, use her powers to, um, help stop this, like, war that might be coming. So there's a lot of political stuff in this one. I think that's something else also that might, like, put people off. I enjoyed it. I found it really engaging and interesting. This was a reread for me, by the way, um, but I do understand that it can be kind of, like, overly complicated sometimes. Um, and one of the reasons that I couldn't give this a full five stars is I feel like there was a little too much, like, military stuff for my taste. Um, and kind of like lols, but I still love this. I love Fire so much. Like every successive book, I like love the female protagonist even more. <laughs> like I still love Katza, but like I really, really love Fire. I really feel for her. I love that she has this this like goodness to her even though she has been forced to make horrible choices and even though she's surrounded by other people making horrible choices I just really love her and how determined she is to do the right thing and seeing her come to realize throughout this book that some of the things that happen are not her fault was just so beautiful and so healing. Like seeing her heal, I mean, was just really lovely. Um, I really enjoyed the romance subplot. I actually would have liked even more time spent on that. Um, and I really thought some of the side characters were really interesting as well. Um, I just continue to love rereading the series. I think it's like really fantastic. Just the feminism I think is done really well. As I said, I found the commentary just super on point. Um, I also found the setting really interesting and like the ideas of these monsters. One of the things that we've been saying in our live shows is like this is a really interesting and well done fantasy series by itself, but then there's also all these other levels and layers to it and I love, like I love the story on both of those levels. So I gave Fire 4.5 stars with the caveat that maybe it's gonna be a five stars later. Next, I finished another read-along book, and that was Unraveler by Frances Harding. Um, this was sadly the last book discussion in mine and Hannah's Frances Harding read-along. Thank you to all of you who have joined us, read with us, watched back the live shows after, however you've been participating or interacting. Thank you so much. We've had a wonderful time. Um, we are still going to be doing our kind of read-along wrap-up live show, so keep an eye out for that. At the time that I'm filming this, that hasn't been announced yet, um, but keep an eye on our social media. Yeah, so this was the most recent book that Frances Harding came out with. It was just like a couple months ago that it was published, um, and this was one of the only ones I hadn't read before since obviously it was new, um, and I loved this. <laughs> not surprising, but in a way it is kind of a relief because I was not the biggest fan of Deep Light, which was her other, like her um, previous 
book like that came out um and was one of the other ones that i hadn't read yet so i'm glad this was a return to form for me because i thought this was fantastic we are following two main characters which is pretty unusual in francis harding's books um we're following a boy named kellen and a girl named nettle and they are sort of like bonded by trauma uh, like they are really really close friends but um there's also some complications there to their relationship because of the way that they met and interacted with each other um and we find out more of that as the book goes and in this world anybody has the power to cast a curse there are these like certain um circumstances that have to arise but anybody can have this ability and kellen is the only person who can unravel them and that is very dangerous because there are some people who don't want him to do that um there's some people who want to use that for their own gain um and at the beginning of the book um a mysterious kind of sketchy person um shows up and basically coerces nettle and kellen to coming with him and they're going to um basically they're going to unravel the curses that this person and their like employer uh tells them to so it almost has like a little bit of a mystery vignette feel for a while which i personally really enjoyed um we see sort of like different like different moments um in their travels as they go to different places and they like meet different people and they kind of figure out like part of what kellen has to do in order to unravel a, a curse is understand it and so that's what kind of makes this feel almost like a mystery book in some places which i really liked um and then as things go on we see them gradually start being more and more involved in some bigger things that are happening um, and some bigger consequences and maybe even kind of changing the balance of power and the way that these curses work and like I was saying I loved this I love Francis Harding's main characters so much this is not a surprise um, but I loved Kellen and Nettle so much like Kellen is He's, he's like kind of an impulsive character, which I often have a hard time enjoying, but I think what made it work for me, and Han and I talked about this in our live show, of course, but one of the things that won me over is that he is impulsive in the service of good. Um, like he, like he's really, really just so committed to doing the right thing that he'll sometimes do that even when it's maybe not like the best moment to do something. Um, and also I appreciate that sometimes we do need Kellen's particular kind of talking himself into and out of situations. Um, whereas Nettle, I feel like, is a much more kind of usual Frances Harding protagonist, whom I also loved. Um, she's very, like, quiet and reserved and unassuming, but she has this, like, deep core of strength, and I love the way that her and Callan balance each other. I loved their friendship so much, um, and Nettle is really dealing with a lot of grief and trauma. Um, I think even though the overall story of this book doesn't feel as dark as, as some of her others, I think there are individual events, um, especially regarding like Nettle's family and like, her backstory that are the most messed up, I think, of anything um, of her books. So that was a really interesting combination. Um, but yeah, like the way this book deals with grief was just so effective. I almost always love the way Frances Harding does her themes and this book was definitely an example of that. I, I love books that examine like justice versus like revenge um, and like consequences and like forgiveness and like how all of that gets so messy and how you can sometimes understand why somebody did something but that doesn't mean it, it's okay and like making the best choice out of bad situations like I just loved all of that so much I love the way this book handled those things and I love the way that kind of these individual like vignettes or mysteries um were used to kind of talk about like different issues like there's one in particular um that I just found very very effective and I love the way that Frances Harding did that. Um, I also found the world and the atmosphere super super interesting. Uh, we spend a lot of time in this like wood and just like that strangeness and the way that it doesn't like the way that it is like um, unassuming because part of its magic is that people will kind of glance over it like they won't pay attention to it but there's always this like creeping unease when you're around it. I just it was done so well. I also found the magic super interesting. Um, I loved the writing as always. I thought the emotional aspects were handled so well. Um, yeah, absolutely love this. I actually initially gave this one 4.5 stars, but the more I thought about it, the more I was like, no, this is a five star book. So I gave Unraveler five stars. Next, I finished Crab Apple Treble by Katie Van Dorn. Um, and this was actually a recommendation I saw on my friend Giselle's channel from Giselle's Book Garden. Um, they read it for a one of their vlogs recently and I thought this looked adorable. So I picked it up and I loved it. Um, the art is super sweet and I love the color palettes. Um, this is just really cozy. Even though the stories are very different, the kind of ideas kind of remind me a little bit of the Garlic and the Vampire series, um, which I love, um, and also like the kind of anthropomorphic 
like food items as characters. Um, but yeah, this was lovely. We are following our main character Calloway and she's really nervous because there's like this produce competition um, and she's really scared. She doesn't want to participate but everyone is kind of expecting her to. So the story is really about like um, people having different like gifts and being able to contribute in different ways and how that's okay. Um, I liked the friendships here. Um, I, like I said, really enjoyed the art. I thought that message was lovely. Um, I, th I liked the way the ending was handled overall um, and this was just really cute and sweet and lovely. So I gave Crabapple Trouble 4.5 stars. I hope there's more in the series. Next I finished Join the Club Maggie Diaz by Nina Moreno which is illustrated by Courtney Lovett. Um, this is a very short novel following our main character Maggie Diaz um, who has a lot going on. Um, she's basically trying to prove to her mother that she is mature and, and responsible enough um, to get a cell phone and to get to hang out with her friends at the park. And so she thinks one way to do that is to like bring her grades up and also to be really involved in extracurriculars, like to show her that she's really good at that kind of thing. Uh, but then she also has some like friend issues going on and that's making her upset. Um, also their grandmother is living with them and Maggie is kind of getting fed up with sharing a room with her. So there's a lot going on. There's a lot of like family stuff and also school stuff and I really like the way this looks at a young kid's like issues and like some of the things that they might be dealing with. Um, I really liked Maggie as a character. I really loved the family elements. Um, I really enjoyed the humor of this book actually. There were a lot of parts that just I found really really funny even though this is intended obviously for kids um, and I liked the illustrations as well. Um, I thought it was interesting too that like the illustrations weren't just illustrating things that had already happened in the text. Sometimes the pictures were actually um, things that you wouldn't know about if you hadn't looked at the pictures, which I thought was a very interesting choice. So I really enjoyed this. Um, I do want to mention that this is on the younger end of middle grade, um, which is not like obviously a problem or anything. I just want to mention that if you're somebody who's not used to reading middle grade, this probably wouldn't be a good one to start with, but I really enjoyed it. I gave Join the Club Maggie Diaz four stars, and I also think this could be a good one to transition for kids who are kind of going from chapter books into maybe starting to read more like middle grade type books, because um, I feel like this one is sort of in the middle, but I thought this was lovely. Next, I finished The Vanquishers by Kaylin Barron. Um, this is a kind of contemporary paranormal story. It's set in a world where vampires were real but they were supposedly exterminated in this big event called like the vanquishing I think. Um, I know that's the name of the book but I think that's what the name of the event was as well. Um, and so like pretty much everybody believes that like that was it, those were the last vampires and they're a thing of the past um, and that we don't have to worry about them anymore. But our main character Boog, um, her like and her friends are kind of some of the only kids whose parents still like take this really seriously who are still being very careful they have like a curfew uh they don't invite strangers into their homes things like that like most people are like oh we don't have to worry about that it's fine let's move on and um boog and her friends are also getting kind of tired of how protective their families are until um a new friend that they make who like is a new kid at school um disappears and boog and her friends gradually start feeling like maybe vampires still actually are around and something has happened to their friend and i did end up Really enjoying this. Um, I do want to mention this is apparently the first book in a series which I didn't realize when I started it um, and that was a little bit frustrating just because there were certain things that I was waiting to get resolved and assuming they were going to be resolved at the end of the book because you know I thought this was a standalone and then those things were not resolved. <laughs> so I just want to mention that. Um, but I did enjoy this. I really loved the friendships. I liked Boog as a main character. Um, I especially loved the way that her and her friend group um, really just reached out to this new boy and the way that they, like, that they had this, like, really tight friendship, but they were still, like, willing to, you know, get other people into their friend group. I just really liked that. Um, I did like some of the family elements. I really liked the take on vampire lore here. I thought the, like, atmosphere and some of the suspense was done really, really well. Um, but I did also have some drawbacks for this one, um, besides, like, <laughs> some parts of the ending being kind of frustrating. Um, there were also things that annoyed me about, like the secret keeping like because I, I totally understand why this group of kids would not like immediately go to an adult or anything but there were like these kids are really smart and so there were a few points in the story where it felt like it was kind of unbelievable that they wouldn't tell their parents about something um and then also on the parent side like with the adults um there were also a lot of times where I was, I was like why aren't you telling these kids the truth about what's going on um I always find it very frustrating in stories or in real life honestly when like adults keep information from kids because they think it'll protect them when actually they would be better protected if you told them a little bit more about what was going on. Um, like not necessarily, you know, everything, every detail, but like 
telling them the truth about what's happening and what's like, you know, at stake here. But overall, I did enjoy this. Um, I think it's a really like fun and interesting concept that was done really well. And I gave the Vanquishers 3.75 stars. Next, I finished The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland in a Ship of Her Own Making by Catherine M. Valente. This is the first book in the Fairyland series. And this was the first book in the read-along that me and my name is Maddie Ness are hosting. Um, I will link our live show down below. Um, this is one of Maddie's favorite series and I had never read this before. Um, so I'm excited to finally be reading the series. And um, we are following our main character, September, who at the beginning of the story, she gets the opportunity to leave her boring life and get whisked away to fairyland. And she agrees without thinking much about it. Um, she thinks she's going to have some fun adventures there, and she does. Um, she starts making some friends there, but then she also starts paying attention to some things that are maybe wrong in fairyland and that she maybe has the power to do something about. Um, yeah, this there's not like a ton of plot in this book, so that's pretty much all I can really tell you in the summary. There's a lot of like questing and adventuring and traveling and stuff, and I ended up really liking it. Um, this is one of those books that, like several of Catherine and Valente's books, this is one of those books where like I totally understand why some people would hate it. Um, the writing is like very, very flowery and very whimsical, and it actually was a little much for me at times um, because I'm pretty picky about that. But even though there were moments where it felt over the top to me, there were also a lot of moments where I thought it was really lovely. Um, and also something I appreciate is that even in the parts where the writing was overly flowery or overly descriptive, it didn't get in the way of the characterization, because that's something that really irritates me about overly descriptive writing. Um, like, I loved A through L. I loved Saturday. Um, I also loved September by about the middle of the book, because initially I felt like we weren't getting to know her as well as some of the other characters, but I ended up really sold on her. I ended up very invested in her. Um, I loved the friendships here. I loved some of the settings. Even though I'm not big on journey stories, I still really liked a lot of the places that September and her friends ended up going to. Um, and I loved the themes of this book. Like, I can already feel that this series is going to break my heart in the best way. Um, I'm a sucker for stories that deal with the bittersweetness of growing up, um, like middle grade stories specifically, and this book is already hinting at that. I think the series in general is going to have that as a central theme, and it just gets me in my heart every time. Um, I thought the ending of this book was absolutely beautiful, and like the way that it balanced, it, the way it like balanced um, kind of the different possibilities of what could happen, I thought the way that was handled was perfect. Like I think, I think it's really hard to have a satisfying ending for a portal fantasy book like this, um, you know, in terms of like where the characters will go, and I think this is one of the best I've read, like, ever. I really enjoyed that. Um, also, like I was saying, some of these really standout scenes I loved, like, um, the autumn setting was beautifully described. Um, I love the first confrontation that September has with kind of the antagonist of this book. I love thematically what that antagonist kind of does for the story and for fairyland. Um, I love the way that September is so aware that she is in a fairy tale and, like, the way this book is both a genuine fairy tale and also a parody of a fairy tale in some places, or not necessarily parody, I guess more of like a commentary on fairy tales. I love the moment where she washes up her courage and her dreams. Uh, like some of the symbolism of, the, of this book really worked for me and that was another thing that kept the writing from really turning me off, you know, in the book. And then I feel like the um, final kind of confrontation was really, really effective as well. Like, yeah, this book just already has me in my feelings. I can't wait to continue. Again, I totally understand why this is very much not everyone's thing, um, but I'm really glad that it ended up being mine. And I gave The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland in a Ship of Her Own Making four stars. And finally, the last book I'm going to talk about today is The Hollow Places by T. Kingfisher. Um, T. Kingfisher is obviously an author I really love, um, but I had only read her fantasy books before this. I'm not really a horror person, so I hadn't tried any of her horror, but I had heard from people that this one is pretty manageable horror. Um, so I decided to give it a try. So we are following our main character, Kara, um, although she spells it with a K, but that's okay. And she is dealing with a kind of like unpleasant divorce, like not, not like messy exactly, but it just, she doesn't really know what she's doing. Um, she's feeling kind of like directionless. She doesn't really know, she doesn't have anywhere to go. She doesn't really want to, um, be with her mom because they have a very volatile <laughs> relationship. So when her uncle, um, is going to be in the hospital for some surgery, um, and asks her to come and stay with him and maybe, like, look after his, like, weird museum, uh, she agrees. Like, this is kind of the perfect thing for her, um, and she's always been really pretty close with her uncle, so she agrees and she goes there. And her and her friend Simon, um, who is the barista at the coffee shop next door, end up finding some real creepy things in this museum and end up going into another world. The way that Bethany has been describing this is, like, 
if you've read the Narnia books and you know that like wood between the worlds, what if that was like even creepier and it was discovered by a divorcee and a gay barista? <laughs> um, and that's, yeah, I feel like that's a pretty good indication of this book um, or a pretty good summation. So yeah, we follow Simon and Kara as they are in this other world trying to figure out how to get back um, and trying to figure out like what exactly is going on, why there is this other worlds that is connected to her uncle's museum. Um, and this was like a very interesting experience. I think I'm glad that I've tried to King Fisher's Horror, but I definitely prefer her fantasy books. This is the lowest I've given any of her books. Um, I give it a 3.5 stars. Um, I do appreciate that I feel like a lot of the characters' decisions made a lot of sense. Uh, I feel like one of the things I've said about T. King Fisher's fantasy books is that her main characters feel like ordinary people who just got dropped into a fairy tale and they're like, okay, I guess I'll just do my best. Um, and that's kind of what this felt like, except with like a horror novel. Um, and I did, I, I did enjoy a lot of the humor in this book. Um, T.K. Fisher's humor just really always works for me. Um, I do think the creepiness aspects were done really well, even though I agree that they were, they, they were like, okay for me. I was like able to manage this. I did uh, get to a point where I was like, I need to finish this because it's freaking me out. So I like read the whole book and then I read a little bit of Garlic and the Vampire, <laughs> or, or Garlic, Garlic and the Witch, I mean, before I went to bed. But um, overall, I do think this was like a manageable amount of horror for me, um, which I guess could be a downfall of this book for people who are really into horror. I also really like the way that this book was structured and like kind of the the timing of certain events I really enjoyed. Like I like that we didn't spend like the entirety of the book in this other world. This did also read very quickly. I was definitely engaged with it. Although with that being said, the like part where they're actually in this like cr creepy other world and you know, all of that, I didn't enjoy that, but like that's something, see I don't like reading horror, so it's like I was not having a good time there, but part of that is because I like wanted them to get out, which is like the point of what was happening, if you know what I mean. Basically I'm struggling to figure out how much of my not enjoying that, like that point, you know, the point of the book um, is just because of the fact that I don't like horror and how much of it was that the book could have been more engaging in those parts, because there was kind of like a lot of waiting around and that does make sense for what was happening and for like what Simon and Kara were hiding from. Um, I think that part was done very well. It was very creepy. Like I think this, the creepy elements were done really well. Um, so all that makes sense but it didn't make for a really gripping um, reading experience at those parts. I did also really love her uncle as a character. I kind of wish that we could see more of him. He was just so like fun and interesting and endearing. Um, and then there, also I liked the resolution of this book. Um, I really like the way everything wrapped up. I loved, there's like this one scene um, set in the museum and I don't want to like give away what that is, but um, it involves like some of the exhibits in the museum and I love that. I love the fact that that happened. I love the reason that happened. It just made me really, just, I really enjoyed that. And then my other big thing that I didn't like about this book, sorry, I feel like I'm kind of bouncing back and forth a lot, but that's kind of how I felt about this book. Um, the other big thing that frustrated me is like the reveal of like what was going on. I feel like that was super obvious, like at least like one big piece of what was happening. I immediately knew <laughs> what the problem was um, and yeah, like so I found that like a little bit annoying but like overall I didn't have a terrible time with this um, but I think I'm probably gonna stick to T. King Fisher's fantasy books instead of horror um, and I give The Hollow Places 3.5 stars. Okay everybody, so that was the next group of my October books. Please comment down below and let me know if you have read any of these, what you thought of them or if you're going to pick them up. I had a lot of read-along books. Um, in this one, in this wrap up actually. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you soon with another video and I hope you love the next book you read. Bye!